Hi, this is Swikat Mohinder. Our topic today is diffraction. Last topic we have discussed about interference. This is under the Basic Science and Humanities course. Under the paper code is PH101. And course code is course name is Physics 1. This is under module 2 of optics. Learning objective is to realize the importance of light phenomena in narrow slits and resolution of optical instruments. So these are the pictures. When sunlight is passing through the clouds, you can see the golden yellow color that is in figure 1 is showing. This is due to the diffraction of light. Again, if a reservoir blade is placed and light is just made to fall, just opposite to the direction, then along the laser blade, you will get this type of optical activity that is shown in figure 2. Again, if a grating is placed, on some spectrometer, if light to is light is made to fall on the grating plate, then we will get this type of spectra. This one is the color band of first order, this one is second order, and so on. And the intensity is diminishing. This is maximum intensity, then it is decreasing and decreasing and so on. In the right hand side and also the left hand side. And this is the original object visible in straight to the grating. This is the original object. So these are the these are different optical phenomena that we can observe due to the diffraction of light. Now come to the point definition of diffraction. The bending of light around the sharp corners. Of an obstacle or slit. Slit width must be comparable to the wavelength of light used and spreading into the regions of the geometrical shadow is known as diffraction of light. That means first point is light must be must have to be fall on some sharp corner, sharp obstacle, then the light will bend. Considering the slit width must be comparable to the wavelength of light used and it will bend where into its geometrical shadow region. Suppose this is the source, light is coming from this way to this way, this is the obstacle, AB is the obstacle, then its geometrical shadow is this, it has been just the geometrical shadow. The light source will illuminate this part after the above portion of the A dust and the below portion of the B dust. Again, this part can be explained using this razor blade. If light is fall onto this one, this is the illumination. So the razor blade where the metal part is there, it will look black. This is the geometrical shadow. Now you can ask, whether the light is coming from your doors, windows, it will diffract? No. Then we have to stick to the condition. The width of the aperture must be comparable to the wavelength of light used. Diffraction are of two types. One is Fresnel's diffraction, another one is Fronhofer diffraction, normally known as Fresnel type and Fronhofer type. Fresnel type in Fresnel type diffraction, source of light and screen are at finite distance. Here the source of light and this is the screen are at finite distance. The incident wavefront is either spherical or cylindrical and in Fresnel diffraction no lenses are used. It is actually a complicated type of diffraction. Next one is Fronhofer diffraction. In Fronhofer diffraction source of light and screen are at infinite distance from the narrow slit. That means sunlight is coming from 
actually sun is light is coming from sun is made to fall on this lens it will be it will made parallel the sunlight and made to fall onto this slit and what will happen this parallel light again made to pass through another lens this lens will produce the diffraction patterns onto the screen so the screen and the source both are at infinite distance both incident and emergent wavefronts are plane wavefront this is the important point incident and emergent wavefronts are plane wavefronts in case of Fresnel diffraction incident wavefront is either spherical or cylindrical here it is for fronopart diffraction incident wavefront are incident and emergent both wavefronts are plane wavefronts come to the next slide from upper single slit diffraction if you look at the picture this is the slit of width d from a to b it's the width d now parallel light is made to fall onto this one then this light rays will pass through this lens l and they will superimpose at different points suppose the point p where they are superimposing and this is the point o where they are also superimposing now the screen is placed at the at the focus of the lens this is the f and from the distance of the slit to the screen is capital d so you can find come back to the previous slide you can find the spectra is like this this is the central spectra and its intensity is maximum and at right and left the minimum uh, secondary maximus will produce and their intensities will be less compared to the central maximum so this is the amplitude of the central maximum and these are the secondary maximus amplitude the minimas are produced in this point this point these are the points are minimum Characteristics of Fraunhofer single slit diffraction, one to I can say a central bright maxima at O, followed by alternate secondary maxima and minima on either side. This is the central maxima, then secondary maxima, minima, minima, then minima, minima on either side. The width of central maxima is twice of a secondary maxima. This is the width of central maxima is twice of the secondary maxima. The intensity of secondary maxima goes on decreasing with the increase in the order of maxima. As the order increases, the intensity of the secondary maxima decreases. Now, intensity of single slit diffraction. We can calculate the intensity i is equal to i naught sin square beta by beta square, where the term beta is equal to pi d sin theta by lambda. D is the slit width, lambda is the wavelength of light used. Theta is the angle of bending. You can come back to the slide here theta theta is the angle of this is the theta the angle of bending so angle through which the light is bent now i naught is the maximum intensity at theta is equal to zero as sin theta theta tending to zero sin beta by beta it becomes one we can show you in central maximum calculation when theta is equal to zero beta is equal to 0, limit beta tends to 0, sin beta by beta is equal to 1, thus i is equal to i dot. Secondary maxima, the combining the solution, sin beta is equal to plus 1 and sin beta is equal to minus 1, we can write a simpler form, beta is equal to sin beta plus 1, then sin 90 degree, 
that means n is equal to 0 means pi by 2, n is equal to 1 means 3 pi by 2 and so on. So sin beta is equal to minus 1. So combining this, we can write beta is equal to 2n plus minus 1 pi by 2. Now beta is equal to, this is the beta, pi d sin theta by lambda. So putting this one, we can find out d sin theta is equal to 2n plus minus 1 lambda by 2. So this is the condition of the secondary maxima. First order and other maxima will produce at there is minima I am discussing later. This is 3 pi by 2, then 5 pi by 2, 7 pi by 2 and so on. At the left hand side also 3 pi by 2, 5 pi, 2, pi, 2, 5 pi by 2 and 7 pi by 2. The intensity of the first order secondary maxima I1 is equal to putting this value I0 sin square beta, beta means 3 pi by 2, then 3 pi by 2 whole square is equal to I0 by 22. Second order secondary maxima putting 5 pi by 2, beta is equal to 5 pi by 2, I0, I2 becomes I0 by 62. So it is evident that the intensity is decreasing from central maxima toward the first order, second order maxima. It is decreasing in front of our single slit diffraction. Now what the minima will form? Now sin beta is equal to 0. What the minima will form? If beta is equal to sin beta 0, then I will be 0 i will be 0 so then sin n pi but n is equal to 0 already we have used it for central maximum so n will start from 1 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 3 and so on so beta becomes so sin beta 0 minus sin n pi so beta is equal to n pi so beta means pi d sin theta by lambda is equal to n pi thus d sin theta is equal to n lambda so this is the condition for the secondary minimum so this is how the inter uh, diffraction pattern is produced. This is the central maxima with maximum intensity, Sec first order secondary maxima. Its intensity is decreasing by I0 by 22. Then second secondary maxima, second order secondary maxima. Its intensity decreasing by I0 by 62 and so on. Come to the next slide. Position of secondary maxima by graphical method. To do this, we will differentiate the expression of intensity i with respect to beta. And we will put di by d beta is equal to 0. So i, as we know, i is equal to i naught sin square beta by beta square. So after differentiating, we will get tan beta by beta. Tan beta is equal to beta. This equation gives the position of maxima. Here there are two equations y is equal to 10 beta another one is equal to y is equal to beta. We will plot this is the y is equal to 10 beta and this one is y is equal to beta. So the intersecting points of y is equal to 10 beta and y is equal to beta will give us the first order second order maximum. We can see from the graph the intersecting points are beta is equal to plus minus 1.435, 1 plus minus 2.46 pi and so on. That means the root beta is equal to 0 corresponds to central maxima. This is the beta is equal to 0 correspond to central maxima. And other points, this is the point, it is not exactly 3 pi by 2, it is 1.43 pi. It will give us the first order secondary maxima. And next one, will not exactly 5 pi by 2, it is 2.46 pi. It will give us the second order secondary maximum. So this is how we can find out the points where the secondary maximas will produce and it can be find out graphically. Thank you. Difference between interference and diffraction. Number one, interference is the result of interaction of light coming from two separate wavefronts originating from the two coherent sources. 
diffraction is the result of interaction of light coming from different points that is secondary wavelets of the exposed part of the same waveform number 2 for interference in an interference pattern the points of minimum intensity are perfectly dark in diffraction pattern the minima are not completely dark in case of interference all bright bands are of equal intensity but for diffraction all bright bands but for diffraction all bright bands are of varying intensity so numerical problem so the question is a screen is placed at a distance of 90 cm from the narrow slit so distance is given 90 cm screen distance that means d is equal to 90 cm here d is equal to 90 cm the slit is illuminated by parallel beam of light of wavelength 6000 angstrom so wavelength will be lambda is equal to 6000 angstrom so lambda is equal to 6000 angstrom means 6000 to the minus 8 cm calculate the width of the slit if the first minima first minima means n is equal to 1 this is n is equal to 1 a distance of 1 mm on either side of the central maximum so small d is equal to 1 mm no here at a distance of 1 mm of either side that means xn is equal to x1 is equal to x1 is equal to 1 mm that means 0.1 cm so what you have to find out what to find out the width of the slit width of the slit so d is equal to the formula is d is equal d is equal to small n capital d lambda by xn all the values are known small n is known one capital d 90 cm lambda is equal to 6000 to the power minus 8 cm xn is 0.1 cm so this value becomes 0.054 cm so the slit width is 0.054 cm next problem next problem light of wavelength 5000 nanostrom that means wavelength is supplied 5000 nanostrom lambda is incident normally on a slit having a width of 0.2 mm that means slit width is given 0.2 d d d is supplied 0.2 mm means 0.02 cm find the width of the central maximum we have to find the width of the central maximum measured from minimum to minimum of diffraction pattern on a screen 9 meter away 9 meter means 9 into 100 cm so, so the width of the central maximum is beta is equal to 2 capital d lambda by small d put in the values 2 into d means 900 cm lambda is equal to 5000 to minus 8 cm small d means 0.02 cm so it becomes 4.5 cm we have discussed from upper single slit diffraction now we will discuss from upper double slit diffraction in double slit diffraction slit width is again we have kept as d and the two slits ab and cd ab and cd are separated by their opaque space bc that is equal to b so the lens is l and screen is placed at the focal length of the lens l now after the superimposition the lights coming from the two slits they will produce the patterns at p dash and p say now the resultant intensity due to double slit at any point on the screen the expression of the intensity is i is equal to 4i not that is the fourth time of the single slit 4i not 
sin square beta by beta square cos square gamma where beta is equal to pi d sin theta by lambda and gamma is equal to pi d plus d. d plus d means d is the open space d is the slit width of a single slit sin theta by lambda now we will get the pattern like this there is an envelope this envelope is for the diffraction and the inner one is for interference we will discuss in details in the next slides this is the maxima and these are the minimum at theta is equal to 0 or but beta is equal to 0 theta 0 means beta 0 beta 0 the maximum will produce and the minimus will form there on and the secondary maximus will